Good morning, it's Katie. It is Wednesday, October the 23rd of 2024. And I wanna share just some things that I've been going through and trying to understand. And it is so mind blowing, kind of everything that's happening in the world. And it, you know, it is scary if you pay attention to it. You know, we have stuff uh, with Israel and, you know, I don't, there's so many different things that you hear about that. That's a whole different rabbit hole. You know, the stuff with Ukraine that's been going on. Um, I know that a lot of the United States of America's money is going to help these different countries again, supposedly. Um, but who really knows? You know, I don't. And, you know, we'll never know um, really, truly um, how legit that is. But I want to go through where I think that we need to like, for me, what I find is a starting point that I referenced back to a lot of different things and it gets my wheel spinning. But this book, I mean, again, this is just a person that wrote this book and it's called The Law, but it makes sense. So when I was a kid, I loved country Western movies, right? I love the gunslinger mentality. I love the farming, you know, I love people protecting their land. Um, against bad guys and stuff like that you know and you had a sheriff and in some movies the sheriff was bad and other movies the sheriff was the hero right um and that like i look back as like being the fundamental principle of where law began right and so this book kind of talks and puts it in a little bit more of like specific but wording that i think is extremely interesting and so he goes on to say it is not because men have made laws that personality, liberty, and property exist. On the contrary, it is because personality, liberty, and property exist beforehand that men have made laws. So what is law? At, um, it is the collective organization of an individual right to lawful defense. Now that's kind of like a strong statement because you hear defense and you think it's the right to own guns and it's the right to, you know, shoot one another if you have to. But that's not at all what it was really created for. Law was a mediator between you and your neighbor if there was a land dispute or if they wanted to come take your wife or take your property or harm your children. It was in order to create an environment where we could live freely and we could live within our means and our creations, um, and then be protected. You know, a lot of times in community, when you have community and you have that, you don't need a whole lot of it. But every once in a while, there are going to be bad people um, that are going to want to take what you have or harm, um, you know, you or your loved ones. Um, you know, evil never goes away. And so you would have people and, you know, originally I believe it was volunteer based, you know, you'd have people volunteer and they would be kind of, to me, a form of, um, mediation or, you know, just an extra form of protection or, you know, sometimes you see neighbors dispute and they would maybe help like, um, mediate that. So that is to me where law originated and it slowly has grown into this huge, 20 headed dragon that now has encapsulated us where we work in order for it to survive and thrive. And I, that's the only way that I can put it, um, in terms that I've come to understand it. Government was put in place by us for us, um, to protect us, not to dictate, to rule, and to create the laws, and to take money from us, and spend it, and apply it to where they want to apply it, and it is that simple. I, you know, maybe some people hearing this are going to be like, oh, she's, you know, super conservative, and she's a Republican. I, like, I am not somebody, I am a female, for one. I'm a female that grew up in California, and I am a gay female, um, so I don't know that I would meet the markers for this ultra conservative Republican. I am just somebody that has done some research to understand that we should not be owned or dictated to by the government. We basically employ them. Um, we are the ones that have created their jobs and they are supposed to be working for us to help provide the best, um, terms of like life balance for us. Uh, protection. Government basically should never be this big. For one, um, they have now 
they're basically, we're basically under rulership and control. And, um, you know, it's funny, I was listening to a podcast by RFK and he was talking about Google and how Google has ran away and how they, um, they basically control us by how things populate and what populates when we do a search term. And, you know, I hear different things and I apply it based off of my personal experience and I can totally see that. And as, um, and he talked about how, you know, I think the biggest thing that we've gotten away from is that these companies, they exist for customers. Um, and again, this kind of correlates with my interpretation of the government. The government exists for and by the people. Um, does it feel like that? Uh, in my personal opinion, no, it does not. Does it to you? I mean, that's something that you would have to ask yourself and come to that your own conclusions on. Now, Google, um, Google is providing a service to customers, right? Technically, businesses are in business to provide services for customers. Now, I'm 46 years old, and when I was a kid, you know, they, they, it was funny because it used to be like the customer was always right. You know, my first few jobs working when I was younger, it was like, whether it, you know, the customer was completely irrational was irrelevant. Um, you were in the service industry or whatever, providing a good and they were paying for it. So they were the customer. The customer was technically always right because they were paying for your services without customers. You had no product or no company in order to keep your doors open. Now, Google, when I was trying to start a business, uh, me and my wife, and becoming entrepreneurs and trying to get listed on Google, it is a nightmare. Um, you can pay and there's all these different things and these hoops that you have to jump through in order to get registered on Google. And that's not even, you can get registered on Google, but then trying to get your information to track if you are a small fish that is not paying them a crap ton of money, um, it is a nightmare. It took us 10 years to even get where, even though we had a website, a public website, we were licensed, we had all of our insurance, we were regulated, we were working with um, state, local state people, companies that are um, agencies, I guess, that were trying to help us uh, with our business and all the loopholes and all the different things you have to do in order to have a business and um, be compliant. But Google would not necessarily recognize us. And we got a lot of errors and different things. And, you know, it's funny because as I was listening to this podcast last night, I looked at my wife and I, you know, I muted it. And I was just like, it is so crazy that they are saying that because I did not feel like a customer of Google. I felt like I was trying to be a member of Google, um, like to get in, right? Like the popular kids. And I was trying to like get a niche on the belt. It did not feel like by any means I was a customer. And I think that these big companies, um, they've even, I mean, Amazon's a perfect example of that too, is I'm in an industry that used to deliver for Amazon and the way that they treat delivery drivers and now they went to third party. And so now you have these people that are having to deliver for Amazon and they think they're working independently and they have their own business, but you're under their thumb and you take all of the liability, all of the liability. And if you get in an accident or you do something, they drop you like a bad habit. Um, again, it's like more of dictator and rule with these big businesses. And they're not incentivized to take care of us because so many of us are bought in. that They're getting all of our money regardless. Trying to cancel, you know, these subscriptions are a nightmare. The other morning I spent three hours trying to cancel um, my audio subscription or I can't cancel it because then I lose all my books, but trying to suspend it and they no longer have the feature. I literally ended up having to call. I ended up talking to somebody in another country and you could tell they're in this sweatshop and there's all these people and stuff in the background. And I'm just like, we're like, nothing is easy anymore. Once you sign up for something, it is near damn impossibly to cancel this subscription or to receive good customer service if you have issues while dealing with that product. And it goes back to like, just government and big business. Like they're just running amok and doing whatever because we have become so disengaged as people. And just, I think like we're all overworked and, um, or overstressed, you know, we all know that we're not happy, but we don't know why we're not happy. And it's because we're not living to our fullest. We're allowing all of this negativity and these businesses and all of them just, just suck all of our power and all of our money up to the top. And, um, you know, and I, 
I think that we are in a time where it is so important to start looking, to start getting engaged and to start doing things maybe outside of the box or what we have been kind of trained or manipulated into believing. And again, you don't know what's real or what's not unless you're personally experiencing it. And that's why it's like I can hear something and I can hear what they're saying about Google and I can literally reflect back to my personal experience and be like, yeah, that's accurate. Like that has been my personal experience. And <clears throat> I... I'm going to say something that I thought never in a million years. And I said over my dead body, what I do, and that is vote for Trump. I, um, I've never voted for Trump. I've never been a fan of Trump. I literally remember when he ran the second time having a conversation with my mom and I love my mom. We have open debates and we agree to disagree sometimes. And a lot of times we agree. Um, but she was telling me that I needed to vote for Trump. And I was like, as a gay female, there's no way in heck I will ever vote for Trump because he is against everything I am and I'm going to lose my rights. This is what I believe because this was the narrative that I was hearing that he was anti, you know, gay rights. He didn't seem like he was someone that was really for females. And so I really bought into that narrative and I had heard him talk. I still hear him talk. It drives me nuts. I am not somebody that likes to listen to him campaign. I don't care for much what he says. I, I mean... In my heart, I feel like that he is connected to the big business and a lot of the problems. I don't know how genuine or how real he is. And the stuff he says is so all over the place. And the way he talks, I would never allow my children to talk as far as how he will just call names to people. It seems like he's gotten better with that. But I'm in a place now where I, there, I believe in RFK Jr. And... Um, he is not somebody that is really put out into the typical media, but I have been following him on YouTube. I follow his channel specifically. I follow him and Nicole Shanahan's channel. Um, and some of the people that they talk to and the people that are looking to try to make changes in America. And I feel in my heart that it is for the right intentions. And I think that it would it would be a game changer for most of us, along with our food, along with our financial situations, um, along with the censorship. And I believe in censorship because I watch if I'm not careful with what I say on my channel, it will not get pushed out. Um, I'm a small channel too, so I'm a small fish and there's no incentive to do so. I'm not making anybody any money. So just, you know, I'm just, I guess, thankful that I have the ability to even be able to talk and put it somewhere that maybe my kids can see at a later date. But I believe in RFK and RFK is endorsing Donald Trump. And I, four years ago, would have told you, I don't care if God himself endorsed Trump, I would not vote for Trump. And today I'm sitting here and I will be going down to the polls and I'll be voting for Trump and I am voting for Trump because I am voting for RFK. And I am hoping that Trump keeps his word and that he, you know, um, utilizes these people like RFK that can make some changes, that can make us healthier, that can get us more educated, that can maybe make things better for us and change the direction that we are going here in the United States specifically. And hopefully that ripple effect will help other countries because I do believe as I've educated myself that, you know, I hear a lot of people saying, oh, we send so many, so much money to these other countries. Yes, we do. But there's a lot of things that have happened behind the scenes where a lot of these pop, these countries are impoverished because of us, because of what our government has done. And so it's this cycle of they have taken from them and they have taken from us and they have pinned us against each other. And that's what's disheartening is that we've all bought into the belief. The reality of it is we are all struggling regardless if we're in the United States or not. And, but we all live in our own world and it's very hard to see outside of that, especially when we don't live there. We don't talk to those people. Um, but I truly believe that government and corporate greed is one in the same and they are sucking the, the, the average person, regardless of what country you live in dry. Um, I do believe that even the United States of America president doesn't have as much power as we are led to believe that they do. Um, there's the UN. There's so many other agencies out there. Um, it is a very, very dark like environment. And it is mind-blowing the amount of power that we have allowed these 
different things to absorb to take away from us when most of us just want peace and harmony and health for our children. Um, and uh, I think some of that has just been lost with all of this stimulation on these different things that like light us up and get us like fired up and divided and stuff like that. And that's not our intent. It's just like, you know, this abortion and these gay rights. And it's, you know, I, I've tried to avoid these topics, but the reality of it is there are two things that keep us immensely divided. Um, and as a gay person um, that came out, I came out late in life, but I've been out there and my mom is super Christian. I grew up Seventh Day Adventist. It is a mortal sin. And my mom was super against it. Um, but my mom also still chose to love me, um, love the person, not the sin, however you want to flip it. Um, or it's not a sin, depending on what your belief is. I really, that's for you. Um, but I have learned in my life that even people that are homophobic or don't believe in it, or they have their faith in their Christianity and it is a sin in the Bible and they believe that and that it does not make them wrong. Um, I do know that if I stay kind and I stay true to myself and I be a good, um, neighbor and those kind of things, they don't care at the end of the day. Most people do not care. Um, but yet they make this huge front that we are divided. I will be honest. I have been around extreme conservatives, extreme religious people. And I, I, I am myself and none of them have been unkind to me. Um, uncompassion or anything like that. And so I feel like the narrative is very extreme. I also believe like the abortion, the pro-life, the pro-choice, all of that has been just another way to divide us. I watched it as a child. It, I mean, I cannot believe as a child around 13 years old, I'm, you know, 13 years after that fact, I'm now 46 and we're still having these same passionate debates and protests about this. Um, I, I don't, I think the average person, if you were to get assaulted, you know, I just, I don't think that these major talking points are relevant. I don't, um, I don't think there should be laws in place for it. To be quite honest, I think that if we went back to the fundamentals of being grown adults, we can make decisions based off our own health and what is happening in our lives. And I think that's the thing is that we've gotten to the point that we feel like, we know what's best for our neighbor. We feel like the government knows what's best for us. And that's not it at all. You know, it is about us and our communities and our neighbors and our family members and about making those decisions and choices for us. None of this should even be at the government level as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, if we want to advocate for something, let's advocate for these kids that are in foster care that are being abused, you know, um, to me, that's what we should be talking about. How do we fix that as a society? Um, but again, I just think that there's a lot of these hot topics that are out there to distract us from the things that we really should be need doing and talking and realizing that we're really all in it together, not, um, divided. So I want to just wrap this up because it got a little more long winded, but I just have had a lot of things on my head and a lot of things that I'm working through. And I just really want people to understand, you know, it's like, I try not to talk about politics. I try not to talk about these things because I don't want to be judged. And, you know, I don't want people to think that they know who I am or that they've got me figured out or that I fit this certain, you know, criteria or anything like that. I truly am just an average person, an average American that wants better for my friends, family, and community. And um, for myself, you know, and I want purpose and you know, I have a shirt that says be kind and I guess it's like, it might be corny, but it truly is that simple. Um, and, uh, and, and I'm going to summarize with the fact that I will be voting and I will be voting for Trump. Um, something that I thought I would never say and never do and was over my dead body four years ago until OFK hit the scene. And, um, he speaks to my heart and, uh, I just, he brings me hope. So uh, that is where I'm at today. I hope uh, everybody is doing well. I hope that, you know, um, stay true to yourself, stay true to personal growth. Um, and, you know, we're never too old to change our beliefs um, and maybe do things differently if it's, if it's for the better. Take care.